things ladies it's the little things sometimes it's not really about making monumental changes in our style it's about making small tweaks and little updates that can help us look and feel more modern fresher more in style more with it all of the things so welcome to my channel if you're new here my name is Netta I'm a personal stylist I'm your fashion friend here on YouTube and I am the founder of the ageless style program where I have cheered over 5,000 women on to confident everyday style so welcome so happy that you're here by the end of this video you're gonna have 10 little tweaks that you can make to your wardrobe that are gonna help you elevate your everyday outfits and help you look modern fresher more like we know what's going on in style right now right okay so I'm excited to get into this topic this can be this can be a little controversial but I know we're all on the same page and really our goal is to to just look better and to make it simple. And that's what I'm here for. If you are interested in, in diving into your closet with me in a small community and just want that kind of ongoing, like that cheerleading and support, I would definitely encourage you to check out my upcoming Closet Confidence Workshop series. I'm doing it again. The first two times were a huge success and I would love for you to join us for this next round. It starts May 13th, mark your calendars. There is a link to sign up in the description box and I'll also put it in the pinned comment below. So I hope that you consider joining us for the Closet Confidence Workshop series. Okay, let's get into the topic of today's video. These are 10 small tweaks that you can make to what you're already wearing that's going to give you an updated, fresher, and more modern look. The first is to switch out a skinny jean for a slim jean. I know a lot of you still love skinny jeans. I know a lot of you still love skinny jeans, but I've got a lot to say on this topic, and let me unpack it really quickly. First is skinny jeans are best for women who love their legs, their bum, and their thighs. Like if you like your thighs and you like your bum and you like your hips, skinny jeans might be a great option for you. So when they do come back in style, which they are not yet, when they do come back in style, um, you may want to consider them at, this, at that point. However, the skinny jeans that are gonna come back into style are not gonna look like the ones we've left behind, hopefully left behind. They're gonna look different. So it's not about holding on to those old favorites. It's about finding a, a, you know, a fresher version of them because they are really going to look radically different if they do come back in style. That said, even if they do come back in style, they are not flattering for most women. Right now, they are absolutely not what's happening in style, and especially a jegging style where it hugs every, you know, and you've got those horizontal lines all the way up, and it's the stretchy fabric, and it's basically leggings masquerading as jeans. Those are not in style. They have not been in style in a very long time, and they are definitely not coming back into style. So we want to switch out the really skinny jeans and the jeggings, and we want to replace them with a slim jean. Now, this can be a cigarette style jean. It can be a slim straight jean but this is your new skinny jean because it has the sleekness and the um the versatility of a skinny jean but it looks so much more modern and the key here is that you can't have the calf and the ankle like cinched all the way down you do not want these jeans to to like hug your calf and ankle you want room between the denim and your leg especially on the lower half of these jeans so that's really one of the key differentiators between a, a slim and a skinny um but you're really looking for a streamlined jean that that is tailored to your body but that doesn't cling and doesn't hug i say this about everything truly the most flattering silhouette in anything is not oversized and it's not skin tight it's that tailored streamlined uh, place in the middle that's going to be flattering for every woman every age every sing every body type every single time so definitely consider a slim straight or a, a slim jean style instead of a skinny it's an easy update that has the same effect and the same ease of a skinny but with a much more modern look okay rant over when my daughter was younger i i used to like just not understand why she would never wear pants and it turns out she really just hated skinny pants because they clung to her and she felt like they were restrictive and not comfortable and it, let's face it she's got a point there now that that baggier and wider leg jeans are in style she actually wears pants so hallelujah um okay 
The next easy tweak is instead of a tunic, try a high hip length top or a waist length top. So what you want is a top that hits just below the fuller part of your tummy if you've got a fuller part of your tummy or at the high hip area. This is the perfect length top because you do not have to tuck it, but it gives that waist definition. It looks modern, it looks elevated, it looks elegant, and it's tuck free, right? For those of you who don't want to tuck, who don't want to do a front tuck or French tuck or a side tuck or any tuck, and you don't want to belt, um, and maybe you really don't want to highlight the tummy area, uh, this is the perfect top. So again, it has to hit you at the right spot, but try on several tops, pin them up. You want that high hip to low waist area, that's going to be magical on you. Because again, it gives that waist definition, it gives that modern look without the, the, the length of a tunic which shortens your legs and deflates your style like they are just tunics have just not been in style for a very very long time and again even if they do come in style they're going to look different and we're going to wear them differently so for now tunics are off the table instead a slightly um, you know, cropped top that hits at your high hip or your low waist is going to be the best bet for all of us especially if the tunic is printed I've, I've covered this before. I've covered this before. You definitely do not want those. Um, okay, instead of a fitted blazer with scrunched sleeves, consider a classic blazer. Now, there are there's a lot happening in blazers right now, and it's almost hard to say that something is out of style and something is in style because pretty much most of the stuff is in style, but it's just that there's a newer version of it. So a classic length blazer is a blazer that hits right there at that at that hip bone. That's a classic length blazer. You can go cropped this season and go shorter, like at the waist or even just above the waist, or you can also go longer. We're still seeing the slouchier blazers. But what you do not want is a fitted, shorter, like not cropped, but not classic, somewhere in that in-between zone, a fitted shorter blazer with a scrunch sleeve. That hasn't been in style in a long time. Truly fitted blazers are not in style like that anymore. Um, they just don't have the same fit. They don't have the same shape that they did a few years ago. So if you still have some of those fitted um, in-between length blazers with the scrunched sleeves, those are, are something that you should replace with, like I said, a classic blazer. If you're spending a lot more money on this blazer, like it's going to be an investment piece, then definitely go for that classic hip length blazer. If it's a more fun trend piece that you may not have in your wardrobe forever you can go cropped or you can go longer but definitely avoid the slightly too short and slightly too tight blazers from a few years ago okay next instead of the tory birch i think these are called the miller sandals these sandals that everyone wore to death michael kors has a version of them too but really the tory birch ones are the ones that i'm i'm most talking about everyone had these um these are just like they're just so played out they're just so played out they've just been around for so long and can i add this is going to be controversial this is going to be controversial the valentino rock stud and the faux valentino rock studs go into this category of sandals that we have seen so much that I'm like, can we get a different style? Can we get a different style? The thing is about these sandals, the Tory Burch sandals have been around like probably 10, 15 years, right? Um, and the Valentino Rock Studs, also a long time. Um, they, they just, they just no longer make an impression one way or the other. Like they don't look chic. They don't look, they don't look modern. They just, they're just there. And I feel like we can do better and we can do more modern. Introducing enter the Sam Edelman Bay sandals. You're going to say, but Sam Edelman Bay sandals have been out for a while and they've been trending for a while. Yes, but they're still really modern and they're sleek and they're simple. And this is still the silhouette that we're seeing in sandals. It's the slide style sandal. Again, this is Sam Edelman's answer to the Hermes Oran sandal. I've, I've talked about the sandal a lot, but a slide sandal like this, this is like where it's at with sandals. And so this is a more modern style of sandal. It does not have to be this specific one, but a style, a style similar similar to this as opposed to a style that's like the um, the Valentino Rockstad or the Tory Burch Miller sandals there those are just those are just not in style anymore so replace those those thong style sandals from several year, years ago thong style sandals are coming back again they don't look like that but replace those with a slide sandal they will go with everything it's like the go-to shoe of summer okay 
Oh, this is a big one. Instead of really heavily logoed bags, I'm looking at you, Michael Kors. I'm looking at you. What the heck is going on? What the heck is going on? I don't understand why you have to have a platform sandal with a big gold M K in metal at the top of, of the sandal. Like not cute, not cute. They are not elegant. Like the if we're gonna take anything from old money or luxury, you know, the luxury trends that are happening right now, which is not even really my aesthetic, but if we're gonna learn something from that really elegant and refined and um, timeless way of dressing, it's that an overabundance of logos is never chic. And truly, who are they marketing those clothes to? They're not marketing it to people who have a, a a lot of money and and really do dress old money they're marketing it to um people who have to save up for these bags and to teenagers and if you've got to save up for a michael kors bag my encouragement for you would be to pick the really simple leather style and like luggage brown and maybe a little you know little mk or a little michael kors like the gold logo on it because it's always on all of his bags but not the monogrammed ones not the ones with the big mk circle hanging off of them if you've got an otherwise great michael kors bag tote bag regular bag and it's got the gold mk circle hanging off of it you just want to snip that off this is true of any gold logo thingies that are hanging off of your bags um I mean, maybe with the exception of a couple really, you know, like a really, really designer bag, but for the most part, just cut off those gold logos. They're not, they're not cute. The, the Michael Kors bags that have the logos all over them, those brands that, that, that infuse their logo into every single thing, that's just not chic. So instead of that, go for a really simple streamlined leather bag that will truly be an investment bag and something you're gonna have in your wardrobe for a long time. It can be from Michael Kors, it can be from Coach, it can be from Kate Spade, it can be from, you know, whatever, like Saint Laurent if you want, but you want a simple streamlined elegant bag that you can use for a long time. You do not want one of those logo bags, I promise you. I'm saying this as, as your friend. Okay. Also along the lines of bags, instead of pattern quilted bags, and I know so many of you, so many of you, I've heard from so many of you, I have a million Vera Bradley patterned quilted bags. I get it. But the only people we see wear those bags are, are women who are very mature or very, very young. Like I know at least for a while, it was a, it was a thing for teens. Like my daughter's first bag was a Vera Bradley quilted bag and like pink and coral. And, you know, so that it was like a thing for like preteens. And then it's also a thing for really, like really mature women. I just don't think these look modern. First of all, they're very limiting. The styles are very limiting. Like, what are you going to wear that bag with? It doesn't go with any of your outfits um they're just not that cute they're just not that elegant if you like the quilted bag style may i suggest there are a lot of quilted bags that are really trendy right now may i suggest the solid colored vera bradley quilted bag like black or navy or whatever like a solid color bag in in a quilted fabric will never go out of style um there are also puffy bags and different types of trendy quilted bags that are in style i will pop a couple of those up and i'll also share a couple of those in the catalog that i will link below this video with which is going to have all of my picks for the the what the what to wears instead of the what not to wears, right? So skip the patterned quilted bags and go for a solid quilted bag instead. I promise you, your your style will thank me. Um, okay, instead of again, on, I'm on a bag kick. These bags, I don't know how, I don't know what to call them, but they're 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 kind of a weight. But wait, there's more bag. There's so much going on. They're they're like a faux croc, right? And then they've got like an ombre gradient color thing going on. And then they've got like ev literally every bell and whistle. These are in keeping with the other two bags that I told you to, the heavily logoed bags and the patterned bags. These are really busy bags and they detract from your style, but without making a statement. So it's different to have like a conversation piece bag or a fun bag or a funky bag. That's not what this bag does. It, it really pulls down your outfit. It makes you look older and they're out of style and they're just not they're just not chic. They're just not chic. If you like bags like this, bags from like brands like Brahmin or Patricia Nash, you want to stick with a simpler bag style from these brands. So something very simple, sleek, all one color, you know, solid, 
that's really going to be the way to go. Um, you're, and, and, and trust me when I tell you, you will have that bag. If you, you know, if Brahman is your investment bag, you will have that bag for a really long time if you pick the simplest version you can find. If you pick one with a ton going on, in about six months, you're going to be like, why did I spend so much money on that bag, right? So keep it simple. You'll have it forever. Okay, so... <sighs> I know this is getting this is getting testy. Um, I'm getting testy about these bags. Okay, instead of ruched ballet flats, I'm seeing these everywhere. They're the kind where the sole bends up like this, right? And they're ruched on the side, often with a round toe, often with a round toe with some weird detail on it that makes it even more dated. These are not in style. Not only were these never comfortable, Oh my goodness, these were never, the ruched ballet flats were never comfortable. They always, and I wear heels all day long, I don't have a problem with most shoes, but they always gave me a blister on the back because the, the cinching made them like hug the back of your foot really tightly and it was just not comfortable. These are not in style, they've not been in style. We know that ballet flats are back in style, they don't look like that. Instead, they look sleek and simple and modern. So you want a ballet flat that's either got an almond toe, a slight pointed toe, or a squared toe. Um, you can have a cap toe also if it's really sleek, but you want, um, and, and even like a simple round toe, but not like the exaggerated round toe and not the exaggerated scrunching. Um, I really like the Sam Edelman Felicia flats. I like the Sarah Flint Natalie flats. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll have many options of modern flats. Um, and, uh, Naturalizer has one that's beautiful for uh, narrow feet. I also have a couple of versions for wider feet. I will have a ballet flat for everybody um, in the catalog in every size category. So there's a great ballet flat out there for you, but the scrunched ones are not it. Okay, next, instead of cork sandals, you know what these cork, these are the cork shoes. I feel like Mrs. Roper would have worn these shoes. Remember Mrs. Roper? I loved Mrs. Roper. She was a style icon, but I don't want to dress exactly like her. Um, these cork like slip on sandals. Now cork is sort of back in style, but it doesn't look like the ones that they're, that are in the comfort shoe section. They look very different. Like I, I showed a pair of, of uh, cork ballet flats from Veronica Beard in my travel video, and those are fabulous, right? But the 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 cork heeled wedge kind of things that, that are like a comfort shoe, that is not what we wanna do with cork. We really wanna limit the cork in our wardrobes, in, 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 in these styles, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. There's modern cork and there's not modern cork, and I'm I'm encouraging you to stay away from the brands that do not have the modern cork, and maybe go for a really contemporary brand if you want. One of my friends has a cork clutch. I think it's from Lily Pulitzer. It's really really cute, but again, um, you have to be careful with it, right? Instead, you want like an espadrille style heel. So that's I don't I don't know what that is. Straw raffia like that that braided like that's the that's the style heel you want for a wedge this season. You do not want a cork wedge. You want a, a espadrille style wedge heel. Okay. Finally, last one and this is another shoe one. Instead of crossover sandals, consider slip-on or slide sandals. I covered this a little bit when I was talking about the Tory Burch, but I'm seeing a lot of like the, the straps that go like this, either at the ankle or across the top of the foot. These are trendy. These are trendy. I do not feel like they are flattering to the foot. And I don't think that they're that feminine. Now, if you really like these, these are these are actually modern. There are modern and not modern versions of them, just like with everything else. And I will share a couple of modern versions if you are really like, I need that crossover style because it holds onto my foot better and I find it much more comfortable. At least we'll pick a modern version for you. But in general, if you can skip the crossover style and go for a, a band across the top of the foot, it can be a wider band. Like, um, like these are a beautiful one that I'm putting up here with like a twisted wider band on top there are some really really cute slip on sandals and and many many styles that will stay on your feet they do not slip off trust me i have several of them um but that the crisscross ones will shorten your legs and kind of make your legs look wider your feet look wider and just not as streamlined not as chic so um that's it 10 
easy little simple substitutions and tweaks, um, some simpler than others, that you can take that will instantly elevate your style. Now, you know that you want to go into your accessories like section of your closet right now. You want to look at your bags and shoes and ask yourself, how can I update and what can I pick that I'm going to wear a ton this season? You want to bring items into your wardrobe that are going to be your new go-tos. And again, if you need help with that process, I would definitely encourage you to check out my Closet Confidence Workshop series. I will link it below. But you want that curated wardrobe where you are really reaching for the things that are in your closet and you want to wear them again and again and again. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. Let me know which of these um, not that so you're going to have the hardest time getting rid of. Which of the items on my don't wear list are going to be the hardest for you to let go of? Um, which are you struggling with? And which have you just gotten rid of a long time ago? I want to know all your thoughts in the comments below. Love you guys. Thank you so much for sticking to the end of this video. Don't forget to give this video a like if you liked it. Don't forget to subscribe so we can keep hanging out. And I will see you in the next video.